What's happening, you bad motherfucker? It's Uncle Joey here for the album of the week on June 30th. I don't know what the fuck, I don't even know what year it is, it don't fucking matter. I'm just here having a great time doing the album of the week. Listen guys, this week's album was released 1975, February 17th. It came out two days before I became 12. Do you think I knew what this album was when I was 12? If I told you I did, I'd be fucking bullshit. I didn't even know who ACDC was when I was 12 years old. But in 1979, they came out with an album called Highway to Hell. I went to the show and I fell in love with them immediately. It was one of the best live shows I had gone to see. And uh, when I left that concert, August 4th, 1979, my goal was to find out everything about this McCuff band. I loved them. I loved everything about them. The sound on Highway to Hell and everything. But... And I discovered, I don't know what the order was, you know, I don't know if I bought Let That Be Rock, If You Want Blood is their live album that we covered a while back, uh, Power Rage, I Can't Get, it's a fucking brilliant album, I just listened to it on the plane last week, it's on my fucking phone, but one of the albums that really struck me, this is why I get so fucking pissed off sometimes, because when you hear the radio, how many more times can I hear Have a Drink on me? I don't want to hear Have a Drink on Me. Great song, great album, but let's explore the early stuff. This is an album worth exploring. First of all, they had two releases on this album. They had an Australian release and an American release. The difference, this song here, there was no Soul Stripper on it. The album is playing. This is like a first release. This is like they only gave you like 15 bucks to release this album. This fucking cover, a good rainstorm. I mean, it's nothing. I mean, granted, it's fucking... Uh, 47 years old this out and I'm sure you know we got it brand new it's in great condition as you can see no fucking line of notes no dick if you look at the back it's just some simple pictures you got like Bon Scott Young Angus the guy playing the fucking drums I forget what his name is this was a complete it's got baby please don't go which obviously is a cover. She's Got Balls, great jam. Little Lover, great jam, stick around. Side two, Soul Stripper, You Ain't Got a Hold On Me, Love Song, Show Business, an Australian recording, all Australian composition. I don't know, it doesn't tell you about the band, who are the members, who gives a fuck, you know what I'm saying? They gave you pictures, but you know what? Again, I'm a stickler for the cover and I'm a stickler for all this stuff you know what it doesn't really matter what matters is what's on that fucking album and this album is a powerhouse it's fucking tremendous I think Angus Young and his brother did that Soul Stripper song when Angus was 16 he was playing the fucking guitar I, I love ACDC if you had asked me if it was one of my favorite ACDC albums no but you gotta go here to go there It'll make it a lot easier for you. If you hear Power Rage, it'll make it easier for you if you listen to this first. Listen to Let That Be Rock. Once you listen to this, you'll go, oh, I get where they were going with that. And you can see the different changes in albums. I love albums. And let's take a band like ACDC, for example. Power Rage is a goofy lyric out. It's got a lot of goofy lyrics. That's why they told him for Highway to Hell, no more fucking around. He had fucking crazy lyrics on that. Superman was out of town, all that type of shit, right? I like all the albums not to be the same. Like a great musician once told me in 1998 that Led Zeppelin was a great band because if you listen to all nine albums, they had a different, not structure, but like the third one had some more country and blues on it, like Gallows Pole. And that's why I love albums, man. It makes you, it lets you rate the band through the years, see what they're doing. I like a full catalog of a musician. You know, I'm, I'm missing albums now, but when I was a kid, if I got Rainbow, I got all the Rainbow albums, you know, from fucking the one with Dio to the one with All Night Long and all. I got all of them because I wanted to see the differences in how they changed. Maybe some guy left the fucking band. Maybe he got replaced. This guy's a little better. I like Technical Ecstasy. Rick, uh... Rick, whatever his name is, is on it. Rick, not Rick Waite. Rick, uh, the organ player from Yes. You know, it sounded different, Technical Ecstasy. And that's why I love albums, you know. 
It's a beautiful thing that they've encapsulated these things. You don't know how lucky we have that we have this music. And yeah, you could go to YouTube and listen to Soul Stripper. But dog, when you mix it with the other songs on the album, like I like the, you know, I was telling Jimmy Florentine, oh, Black Sabbath, I would listen to uh, Never Say Die. Never Say Die has a great side A. People fucking love it. But if you listen to Johnny Blade by itself, it's not that good. You got to play Johnny Blade with the fucking uh, Junior's eyes behind it. But what the fuck do I know? I'm just a fucking fat comic. This is the album of the week, guys. ACDC, high voltage. Uh, if you go on Wikipedia, it's not the original band. It's the two brothers and Bon Scott and maybe uh, Phil Rudd on the drums. I'm not sure. It's a different fucking lineup, but the result was the same. I love you, motherfuckers. Have a happy 4th of July. Stay black. Uncle Joey loves you, cocksuckers. Peace.